what is up guys the easiest way for you to locate to uk is to use the health and care worker visa and as of july 2023 rishi sunak who's the minister here in uk indicated that they have no plans to take care workers out of the shortage occupation list as i speak to you right now i've had over 20 family members use the health and care worker visa to locate to uk and in this video i'm going to be sharing with you the 10 steps that you need to take for you to be able to locate to uk as a healthcare assistant and these steps are simple and straightforward and they are the very steps which my family members used and they came here to uk we discovered that there are individuals who've been applying for healthcare assistant jobs from maybe two years ago and they are still not getting any jobs but some of my family members they implemented the steps some they started just this year january and now they've already located to uk and none of them paid any money for them to be able to locate to uk which means they all used a free certificate of sponsorship to locate to uk so in this video i'm going to be sharing with you the 10 simple steps that you need to follow for you to secure a job in uk and if you are new to my channel my name is pauline popomoyo and this is the channel where we keep things real guys and if you are looking to locate to overseas do smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss any of my videos and before i dive into today's video if you've got anyone that you know who's trying to locate to uk using the health and care worker visa do share this video with them because they might benefit a thing or two from this video so guys without wasting any of your time let's get into it no comparison I'm a savage, yeah. classy, bougie, yeah. gadget, yeah. sassy, moody, hey. nasty, hey. yeah. hacking, stupid, what was happening, bitch, yeah. what was happening, I'm a savage. So guys, if you want to locate to UK as a healthcare assistant, the number one thing that you need to do is to do the appropriate course. Why am I saying the appropriate course is because I've had a lot of people come to me. They've been searching for jobs. Popo, I've been applying for jobs for the past 10 months, for the past whole year. And when I say, can I check what courses did you do? You discover that someone only did online courses. For example, I did this 15 courses with Florence Academy and I'm now ready to come to UK. If you are that individual who did only 15k courses online with Florence Academy, the chances of you getting a job here in UK are very slim or they are close to none. What you have to understand is that if you are applying for a job from overseas, there's a difference between someone here in UK and someone from overseas, which means if you're coming from overseas, obviously, Hiring someone who's already here in UK is cheaper than hiring someone from overseas. You obviously have to have a course which carries weight for you to be able to be located to overseas. So there are certain courses, for example, my family members, most of them they did St. John's, some of them they did Red Cross. So what is the difference between an online course and a course like, for example, St. John's or a course like a uh, Red Cross? The difference is that when it comes to courses like Red Cross, they give you what we call relevant experience, which means you are going to be going for attachments. And when you are going for attachments, you are basically going to be dealing with clients just like when you are now working, you're going to be dealing with clients. So that hands-on experience is what they want, which means if you have had hands-on experience, even if it was a, an attachment, it is better as opposed to someone who come and say, I took care of my grandmother. When my grandmother was ill, I took care of her. She had diabetes, she had what, she had what. Taking care of your grandmother at home is different from taking care of a grandmother or an elderly person in a care home you understand guys because when you're looking uh, at elderly care homes we have things like you have to know how to waste your clients you have to know all the manual handling techniques and all that which most of the time when you're at home you don't have to worry about i'm going to hoist my grandmother with two people most of the time we do uh, manual handling techniques which are not acceptable for example drag lifting and all that so there's a difference between someone who took care of a grandmother at home and someone who took care of an elderly woman in a care home so that's why if you just teach your online course like florence and then you go on to say i took care of my grandmother 
you're not going to get a job because the experience that you have doesn't hold much water as opposed to someone who has worked in a hospital set up or in a care home set up. The second thing that you need to do, if you look at courses like Florence Academy and all that, those courses are not courses where you can just go and do them and say, I now have Florence Academy course, I can now come and work in the UK. Those are courses which are meant to boost your CV. And when you are doing those courses, you just don't do any course because I've seen people just go there and they look at any course that they see there. They just do as long as they've got a course. The courses that you do in Florida's Academy should go hand in hand with the job which you're going to be applying for. For example, if you're going to be working with children, you need to do maybe courses like safeguarding or vulnerable children. Or if you're dealing with adults, you do courses like safeguarding or vulnerable adults or you do basic life support or you do medication administration those are relevant courses so if you want to boost your cv you only do courses which are going to be significant to the job that you're going to be undertaking be it an adult job or caring for vulnerable children the course that you undertake has to be appropriate for the job that you're going to be applying to step number three before you apply for any job here in the UK, you need to have relevant experience. There are people who go and do, for example, diploma with Alison, like diploma in adult care with Alison. Yes, that diploma is good, but you need to have relevant care experience. There are people, this includes part of my family members, who started courses from scratch but for them to gain that relevant experience which is going to make them stand out compared to the rest of the crowd some of them they volunteered in hospitals they volunteered it depends with where you want to go and work for example if you want to go and work with adults they say you want to come and work in a care home elderly care home you can go and volunteer in an old people's home because in an old people's home compared to a nursing home here the activities of daily living whether it's bathing grooming administration of medication mobility are the same things which you are going to be doing when you are working in an old people's home here in uk which means you are gaining a relevant experience so if if <clears throat> which means you are gaining a relevant experience so there are people who had zero healthcare background but they went and volunteered for at least three months to six months because here in uk when it comes to care jobs i can say three months experience or six months experience if you want to go and work in the nhs they say six months experience so people they volunteer hospital care home all people's home six months to gain that relevant experience and make them stand out from the rest of the crowd you understand guys so back in the days when this health and care worker visa initially started they were not fussing much about relevant experience but now because a lot of people want to look at the uk under the health and care worker visa they have to select the best amongst the best like if you are ten thousand, they have to select the best out of the ten thousand. and obviously if you've got experience like taking care of your grandmother at home compared to someone who's got six months hospital experience a person with six months hospital experience stands a better chance of getting a job here in uk as opposed to you with a experience even if you say five years of taking care of your grandmother at home the policies and procedures that you do at home compared to the policies and procedures that you have to follow in the hospital are totally totally different I can just say at home, we hardly have any policies and, and procedures. You understand, guys? It's different. It's different from the hospital. I know there are people who did courses online and they just started applying for jobs. And they've been sitting. And since December last year, they've been sitting to date doing nothing. Whereas you could have volunteered, even if it means you're going twice or you're going every weekend to the hospital or to the old people's home. That experience that you gain. It can be one year experience. Had you started maybe in November last year and you've been going two days, two days each week, by now you'll be having one year experience. So just don't sit and say, I now have my care courses, I have to apply for jobs. Apply for jobs at the same time gaining experience. Because here in UK, they fast much about experience. 
if you've got a master's compared to someone with a diploma if you have masters and you don't have experience they will rather have someone with a diploma but has got relevant experience in the field so that is the importance of gaining experience so if you're out there and you have your courses and you have no experience start looking for means of getting experience in hospitals in old people's homes and so forth and so on guys number four you need to have a valid driver's license and when I'm saying valid driver's license, I'm simply saying do not go and buy licenses. Yes, it is important to have a driver's license if you want to move to UK as a care assistant. Because some of the jobs or most of the jobs that you can secure here in UK is the domiciliary carer jobs. Of course, if you're going to secure a job in a care home, they don't fuss much about the driver's license. But as you're applying for a job, you don't know whether you're going to secure a job in a care home or you're going to secure a job as a domiciliary carer or a support worker. So if you are to work as a domiciliary carer, actually having a driver's license is mandatory because you should be able to move from point A to point B. And on top of having a driver's license, you have to be a competent driver because having a driver's license doesn't necessarily mean you are competent. So you have to be a competent driver so if you don't have a driver's license and they are looking for a care job here in uk you are putting yourself at a disadvantage you rather go and get that driver's license before you even start applying for jobs here in the uk now let's move on to point number five point number five after getting your driver's license you need to get your ielts english test I've seen people who've been applying for jobs here in UK and they don't have IELTS as yet. I know several people who lost their jobs because after getting care certificates, before even getting their IELTS English test, they went ahead and applied for jobs. They were interviewed. They did excellent. They told they had passed their interviews, but when they asked for the relevant documents, they did not have the relevant documents. And because they didn't have relevant documents, the offers were withdrawn. So to avoid the situation whereby you have your offer withdrawn, go and do your IELTS English test. Even if it means it's the first thing that you want to start with. IELTS expires after two good years. So two years is a very long time, guys. So even if you haven't done your, your core courses and you want to start with IELTS, it's fine because it expires after two years. Point number six, you need to have a TP test. Why is it important to have a TP test? It's because if you look at it, like if you're coming in as a nurse, you obviously do your TP test maybe after getting a job and whatever. But it's different when it comes to care jobs and care companies. Care companies, for example, if you go and check, let's say, Barperazim, they advertise on their website. They clearly state that before you even apply for a job, you need to be having a TP test, IELTS, and whatever else that they mention. I know that the TP test expires, but if you're applying for a job here in UK and the company says they want a TP test, obviously, if I have a TP test certificate and you don't have a TP test certificate, if they ask us to present our documents and I present everything which is needed from IS to TP test to everything, obviously, they're not going to wait for you to say, I've booked for my TP test. After two weeks, I'm going to be doing the TP test so that I come to UK they will opt for a person who has what is part of their requirements because each company each company is free to put whatever they want as their requirement and if they want a tp test as part of their requirements you have to have that tp test ready understand guys you have to have it ready I know it expires after six months, but the hope will be that once you have gathered all your things and are ready, once you start applying for jobs, if you are following the proper, proper channels, you'll be able to secure that job before your TP test even expires. And point number seven is the police clearance. We also know that the police clearance expires after six months. But because most organizations which are hiring carers from overseas are making it mandatory that you have to have a police clearance. You can have a police clearance after getting a job and everything. But if the companies which are hiring you from overseas are saying, we want you to have a TP test, we want you to have police clearance before you apply, which means you have to have that police clearance before you apply for a job here in the UK. Step number eight, before you even start applying for any job, you have to have proof of funds. That is £1,270 in your bank account and it has to be there for at least 28 consecutive days. 
so when it comes to proof of funds some organizations once they offer you a job they want a receipt from your bank which shows that you've got funds you're going to be able to sustain yourself here in uk simply meaning it's not all organizations are going to indicate in your certificate of sponsorship that they are going to be providing proof of funds which means before you apply for a job here in uk you need to have proof of funds you need to have 1270 pounds in your bank account ready such that when they say can we see the proof of funds you can provide the receipt they're not going to be asking for your money but they need you to have that money in your account to show that in case they give you a job you're going to be able to sustain yourself here in uk even if you have provided evidence that you've got proof of funds do not touch that money until you apply for a visa and you have submitted and shown home office that you actually have that money for 28 consecutive days in your account because we've had people we have lost their jobs because they're not able to provide or to show that they've got enough funds for them to take to uk they'd use that money and because they'd use that money they could not process their visa and the companies are not going to wait for you to start saving that money again so that you put it back in your account and stuff like that so it's important that you always have your proof of funds ready in your bank account now the most important thing is how do you get a job here in the uk and before you apply for jobs the most important thing that you need to have is your cv your cv determines whether you get a job or you don't get a job here in the uk I've done a lot of CV reviews and most of the time the types of CVs that we have are substandard. They're not even the UK standard types of CV. And when it comes to CV guys, you see that sometimes when you apply for jobs, they ask you to submit a CV online. It's because they use, I've, already talk, I've always talked of the application tracking system. The application tracking system searches for keywords in your CV which means if you are applying for a job here in the UK, before you submit your CV, you have to look at what are the requirements for the job. For starters, you also have to look at um, the job description, what you're going to be doing in that job. And you also have to look at the qualifications so that when you are now structuring your CV, you structure your CV to match the job that you're applying to because the application tracking system is going to look for keywords in your cv which are similar to the job description which you're applying to so what i'm basically saying is it's not a one size fits all cv the cv for a domiciliary carer is different from the cv of a care assistant works in a care home it's also different from the cv of someone who's a support worker although there are so many similarities in those cvs they are different because for example a domiciliary care worker can be expected to administer medication whereas a care assistant who works in a care home is not going to be administering medication and which means if the application tracking system is looking for someone who's going to be able to administer medication if your CV does not have that bold keyword of administration of medication, even if you submit a good CV, because those important keywords are not there in your CV, for example, administration of medication or dressing of wounds or caring for vulnerable adults or whatever the keyword is, if it is not there, no matter how good your CV is, it will not be picked. It's not going to be picked because the application tracking system searches for certain skills which they need for a particular job. If it's administration of drugs, they are searching for an individual who's going to be able to administer drug. So if that keyword is not there in your CV, the application tracking system is not going to pick your CV. So it's discovered that you will submit 500 applications, but because you don't have the relevant keywords, you are not going to be picked for any interviews. You can use indeed.com to look at your CVs. Better still, if there's a particular job that you want to apply to, there's Clara from Clara Immigration. The good thing with Clara is back in the days we used to review CVs, but then you discover that when you are reviewing CVs, you are doing a back and forth, back and forth. At the end of the day, you end up taking the whole day. It used to take me the whole day to go through a CV with just one person. And now remember, you are not only dealing with one person, there are thousands and thousands of people who need their CVs reviewed. Clara has made it super easy for most of you guys. For those of you who are interested in having CVs constructed for them 
which to me is very important because the CVs, guys, I've reviewed thousands and thousands of CVs. I don't want to lie. Half the time, the CVs that I review are substandard. So if you have someone who can review a CV for you, construct a UK CV for you so that you go and use it to apply for the jobs the better so if you want clara services you can reach out to her on instagram that lady with red glasses i'll leave the link in the description box so that you get in touch with her and she will provide you with an excellent cv that you can use to apply for a job here in uk because the cv is very very important guys it determines between you being paid for the job or you not being paid for the job step number 10 is the application for the job and I'm going to be honest with you guys. We do come and share jobs here with you to say this company is hiring, this company is hiring, and that company is hiring. But what I can tell you is when we share those companies with you, it used to work when we first started here. You know, when you started posting jobs, like in March last year, we would come and post jobs and say this company is hiring. People would go and apply, and a lot of people, I know a lot of people. We managed to get jobs through the companies that I would come and share here on YouTube. Why was it easy? It's because there wasn't much competition. People were still in the process of gathering their documents. People were still in the process of doing the care courses and stuff like that. So the competition wasn't as stiff. Now, if I come and post just one job, just one job to you today and say, there is this company which is hiring. At the end of the day, Clara from Clara Immigration who come and post that job. She's got over 85,000 subscribers. Tochi Esther who come and post that job. She's got over 160,000 subscribers. Ada Kings who come and post that job. She's got 50K subscribers. Another person who come and she's got 10,000 subscribers. At the end of the day, we are looking at one job being posted against 200,000 people. You understand guys? What are the odds of you being picked out of 200,000 people? Because obviously, Clara's subscribers are going to apply. Torchy's subscribers are going to apply. My YouTube community is also going to apply, which means the competition is very stiff. I was talking to one recruiter. They only needed five people. They only needed five people in their organization. And they received over 13,000 applications for just five jobs. So what are the odds of you being picked out of the five? Honestly, it's very, very difficult. So it's no longer the same. Even if you come and say, oh, these companies are hiring, only a small, 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 small fraction of you are going to be picked by those companies. So now you have to run away from these jobs that you come and say, this company is hiring because you know that you are not the only person who's going to be applying. You are going to be applying for that job together with 50,000 people, 50,000 people. So now you have to love, fall in love with the shortage occupation list. There's something which you call the shortage occupation list whereby organizations, care companies which are hiring from overseas, care homes which are hiring from overseas, they are in that shortage occupation list. And if you go to those individual care homes and you apply directly to those care homes, you've got higher chances of getting a job in those care homes than from the care companies that we come and share here with you. I'm being honest with you guys. Like, yeah, I like keeping things real. That's the honest truth. I might come and say five care companies hiring from overseas, but it's more than 100,000 of you guys who are eyeing those five care companies. Whereas if you go on the shortage occupation list, because each and every day, companies are getting licensed to sponsor. If you spot a company which received their license to sponsor today and you send in your application today, it's not everyone who's going to be sending it. It's not like you're competing with 50,000 people. You understand? So it's better you use that shortage occupation list to go company by company and be applying. This is the strategy which all of my relatives used. I said I have over 20 relatives here in the UK, guys. And this is the strategy which they, which they used. There is not even, because people think that, oh, because they are my relatives, I connected them to uh, companies. 
I did not connect even a single one of my relatives to any company because I'm not connected to any company. I don't have those connections, guys. I told them, I sent them the shortage occupation list, guys. And when I sent them the shortage occupation list, I said, this is how you use the shortage occupation list. Apply and do APCT. That's how all of them, all of them managed to secure jobs here in UK. All of them. No one paid for their certificate sponsorship because they applied directly to care homes. Why is it important to apply directly to care homes? It's because it's not everyone who be knowing that that care home is hiring. Whereas if I come here and say Angel's Care is hiring, hundreds and hundreds of people are going to apply for that job. But if it's a care company which is new, they got their license to sponsor today, very few people are going to be able to figure out that this care company is hiring from overseas, which means very few people are going to apply to that company. And if you are one of the few people who applies to that company, you stand higher chances of getting a job as a care assistant here in the UK. So I'm going to leave the link to the shortage occupation list in the description box so that on a daily basis, on a daily basis, you go on that list and you apply for jobs. And guys, the organizations that we shared March last year, June, July, August last year, go back to those organizations because there are certain organizations who actually said, we have taken this page for now. We are working on this page. We are going to reopen after three months, after six months, after. And I know a lot of people have gone back to the organizations that we shared from the beginning of the health and care worker visa and they're still getting jobs there guys so i don't want to lie to you when we come here and say this company is hiring it reduces your chances of getting a job as a care assistant here in uk because now the competition is very stiff everyone has done a care course to come here to uk and now the chances of you getting a job from fifteen thousand people who apply for one job or two jobs or three jobs the chances are very slim understand guys so guys there is no magic when it comes to securing jobs here in the uk you just have to follow those 10 steps that i've told you and most importantly when you're looking for jobs do not only focus on countries like england because everyone seems to think that going to uk is going to great britain is going to england there there are countries like Wales, there are countries like Scotland. Those places, they've got so many vacancies. But because everyone is focusing on getting a job in England, getting a job in England, at the end of the day, the competition in England is very high. Whereas there are so many companies in Scotland, there are so many care homes, and there are so many people, when I used to come and share companies here, there are so many people who managed to secure jobs in Scotland. So if you are looking for a job, look for care homes in scotland look for care homes in wales those are two areas which are mostly ignored look for care homes here in northern ireland because we do have some care homes here in northern ireland which are offering visa sponsorship from overseas perfect example is the organization that i work for they hired so many care assistants from overseas they offered them full visa sponsorship and they did not pay a single time to locate here to uk how did the individuals that i work with know that the care companies are hiring and check if they're in the list of licensed sponsors and they applied and they got jobs here in northern ireland so guys stop focusing on england look at scotland look at northern ireland look at wales look at care homes in those areas and you've got higher chances to get jobs here in the uk there are thousands and thousands and thousands of care homes here in uk guys and the government has actually set aside funds for adult social care so that care homes can hire care assistants from overseas and you don't have to pay a single dime for you to be able to relocate to uk and come and work as a care assistant in care homes i hope this information has been helpful to you guys and if it is helpful to share this information with people who are willing to relocate to uk as care assistants and guys if you want me to do a video where i will demonstrate to you how to use the shortage occupation list do let me know in the comment section and i'll do that video where i'll demonstrate to you how to identify care homes which are hiring from overseas with visa sponsorship how to use the shortage occupation list and so forth and so on otherwise 
this is all that i wanted to share with you guys and thank you so much for watching i will see you in my next video bye